Now we're moving more into just what are some of the characteristics of open channel flow and some of the criteria that you use to define what type of flow condition we're dealing with. So again, we're in open channel flow hydraulics. This concept of critical depth is defined right up here. You know, for a given channel, there's one depth called critical depth that has the lowest amount of energy of flow. It's called D sub C or critical depth. It occurs, for instance, where we have a subcritical flow, and that is where our depth of flow is greater than critical depth. And for instance, at a channel configuration like this, here comes our flow that's then by gravity falling over. It crosses below critical depth and becomes supercritical flow because it's below critical depth. And then at the bottom, that's the slope flattens out. You can cross and increase above critical depth and you get into subcritical flow. Okay, as a reminder, we'll just uh, you know continue through, and you'll see some more definitions on those terms: subcritical and supercritical. The equation, which is on your page six in your PE Environmental Reference Handbook, is a critical depth for rectangular channels. It's listed here. Okay, it's the cube root of your flow rate divided by your channel width. That value is squared divided by g. And the whole thing is taken to the cube root. Okay, so we can determine what is critical depth. And then in the problem, if they gave you what is the depth of flow, you can determine if your depth of flow is greater than critical depth or less than critical depth to determine if you're in subcritical or supercritical flow. Continuing on with this definition, the total energy of a point in an open channel this is, of course, given by the equation of capital H is equal to our depth of flow plus our V squared over 2G plus our Z, which is typically the channel bottom, which is used as the datum. Okay, if we take a look at this figure, we have our Z value. Next would be the D. Depth of flow, of course, that takes us right up to the water surface. So the hydraulic grade line would be and is the water surface of an open channel, all right, HGL. And then if we knew what the velocity was in this channel and we squared it divided by 2G, we could come up with the energy grade line. So just like we saw in pipe flow, if we were to list this out as an EGL and HGL condition, you're going to have greater energy at point one. And because as this fluid flows through the open channel, it's going to lose energy. And you're going to have less energy at position two. And you see the slope of the energy grade line. And if we knew what the length of this channel was, right, it would be that loss of energy h sub l divided by l would be our slope of that energy grade line. Any questions on that?